Hey everyone, this is Ryan Farley. I'm going to give you a quick demo of a project I've been working on called Sublogix. Sublogix is a simple repository for sales logics that would be a great um, fit for things that don't exist in sales logics web. It's not an, an attempt to replace the repository and the entity model that exists in sales logics web platform, but to provide you a, a similar ease of use kind of experience when you're building .NET extensions for the LAN client, building standalone applications, and those types of things. I'm going to start up a new project here in Visual Studio, and I'll just call this Sublogix Demo, and I'll just let it be a Windows application. So um, first thing I need to do is reference the Sublogix DLL. There's just one single DLL to reference. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to do two parts to it. One is the act of retrieving data, and the other is updating and creating data. So let's look at the first one of retrieving data first. Let's build just a simple search application that will search accounts uh, based on a value inputted by the user. Text box and let's use a data grid view for the results so we don't have to mess around with that a whole lot. So just get these set on here. Okay, so the user is going to type a value into the text box and click the search button. So let's put some code there and the first thing we'll want to do is reference, uh, you put a using in for sublogix. I'm going to just uh, start typing it in, add the using in. So now, um, I need to create a repository and I have two options to tell it how to connect to the database. The, I can give it a connection string or I can just supply to it the sellslogix server, sellslogix connection, and a sellslogix username and password. So I'll go that route, put in the server, my database name, and my SalesLogix user, which does not have a password. Okay, so I've created my repository. In our case, we want to just search for accounts. So I'm going to get an account list and I'm going to fill that from my repository and I'll use the find method. I'm going to be finding accounts, add my sublogix.entities namespace so I can have that reference there for the account. I'm going to be finding accounts and I have a few different options for how I find things. Uh, you can see from the IntelliSense one option is to use a thing called a where constraint where I can specify one or multiple where conditions to use in retrieving these accounts. The, the one I like to use is using an expression. Um, so I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to just use uh, my variable and I'm going to say account name uh, starts with the value that the user entered into the uh, into the text box. So that's going to find for me a list of accounts where the account name starts with the value that the user put into the text box. And then I'll just uh, bind it to my data grid view. So we don't have to spend time with doing anything with it. And then I'll also put the uh, title bar of the form to be to show a list of how many accounts we got back. So let's run that and see what happens. And I'll just put in ABB and search. And I can see I got a couple of accounts back here, Abbott Limited and Abbott Worldwide. Uh, let's do everything that starts with the letter C. Gave me 91 accounts back. You can see here the account data. And one thing to note is you'll notice that um, 
you'll see this as we update an account, that it gives things back to me as true um, C sharp types. So I'm getting things back as date times, as, as true booleans, even though in cells logics that really is a one character string of T or F. I'm getting things back as you would expect to work with it in C sharp. Okay, so that's a simple way of retrieving some accounts. Just to show you a few other ways you can do that. Well, let's leave that. Another way I can do that is, is with more of a, a fluent type of syntax where I can get my account list and I'm going to use this thing in the re repository called a select. I'm going to be selecting accounts and then I'm going to specify a where condition. We'll say where um, the account where the account uh, we'll say starts with a b and the type um, equals customer and I can do some ors in there or something and I'm going to order that by uh, the create date and then I have to tell it to execute that query so that's another way I can I can get that account list so let's we're not using the value inputted in by the user here but if I just go ahead and do that I can see that gives me back one account Abbott, Abbott limited so those are a couple of options for retrieving data now let's take a look at updating something so just as a quick demo we're not going to do any kind of UI for this we'll just put a button on here where we can click it and let's just grab Let's grab the, the Abbott Limited account and we'll update the type on it. So I'm going to get an account and I'll just use the, uh, the get by ID so that'll get, get for me the Abbott Limited account and now we're going to update the type on that. So I'm just going to say account.type equals tester. And then I'll tell it to save the account. And that's all that's needed. Uh, let's put a message box after us just so we know that it's done. So if we execute that, let's take a look. Here we have the Abbott Limited account in Cells Logics. Let's go ahead and run our app. We'll click our button, and there's our done message. And we'll go over to Cells Logics, refresh, and we'll see that the type is now tester. So that's great, nice and easy. No SQL syntax or insert or update statements, anything like that. <coughs> now, so Sublogix comes with built in uh, an entity model for the standard out of the box Cells Logics database. But most people don't have just a cell logic standard table structure. They've added custom tables, added custom fields, and you want to be able to use those with sublogics as well. So to solve that, there are some templates you can add into your project in Visual Studio that will build your own custom entity model based on the scheme of the database that you're connected to. So let's do that. I'm going to add a new folder here, and I'll call it Entities. I don't have to call it that. I'll, I could call it whatever I want. And now there's there's two template files that I'm going to drop into that folder. Uh, one of those is called Sublogic Settings. And if I open up that in just a text editor, there's some of uh, some values I need to set. This is my Cells Logic server name. This is the database name that I want to, or not really the database name, the name of the Cells Logic's connection in Connection Manager. 
that you're going to be generating this this uh, entity model for and a sales logics username and password and then I can also specify the namespace that I want it to create this entity model with and I'll just leave that the default so I'm gonna just take these two files drop them right into that entities folder you can see it's thinking about something what it's really doing is it's connecting to that database and creating my entity model for me so I'm gonna now all I need to do to use my custom entities is to change over to that namespace that was specified in that file so instead of using sublogics entities I'm going to use the custom namespace you can actually expand that template and open up the file the C sharp file that it created for you so to see something like account here's the account class uh, but basically here's my namespace here of this of this file so that was called custom entities so now I'm using the model that was just created for me by these templates so let's real quick create a new custom table under the account and we'll just call this account test and let's let's uh, give it a nice pretty display name it's going to use that when it generates the class uh, put it as a one to many and we'll just put a few fields we'll name one filled one string and leave that be a string filled two boolean and we'll make that a sales logics boolean and then the last one is uh, filled three date have that be a date time so let's save those now in Visual Studio I've already dropped my templates in there I can just right click on that folder and say transform templates and it'll recreate the entity model now based on the schema that's in my database including that new table so let's after we update the account let's add one of those child records to it. So to do that I'm going to just create a new variable called account test and from our repository we're going to create a new account test object. So that's our new table we just created. So I can set some values here. Associ Oops. So I got to associate it to the parent account, which will be the Abbott Limited account we just searched for. And then let's set those. We'll call this uh, hello. And our Boolean will set to true. And our last one, oh, dang it. We'll just set to right now and we're done setting those values so now we just save it and that's it so now we're updating the Abbott limited account and creating a child record underneath it no need to set the new ID or anything like that Sublo sublogics will handle that as well as the create and modify fields so let's click that now and there's our done message we can go and run a query here on our new account test table and you can see it created it associated it to the right account ID all of the it created a new ID for that row in the database filled in the create and modify fields and here's our values that we entered in as well so that's a basic run through of sublogics you can see it certainly is a lot easier than working with a lot of insert update and all different kinds of SQL statements. So I hope it'll be available soon, so I hope to get some feedback from you when you get a chance to use it. Thanks. Mm -hmm.